I want to switch gears now back to one of our top stories. More allegations of police brutality in this country were lodged over the weekend. In this case, it involves a clash between RCMP officers in Fort McMurray and a First Nation chief. Athabasca Chippewan Chief Alan Adams says he, his wife and niece were returning to his truck back in March. He concedes the vehicle had expired registration, but Chief Adams says the RCMP approached to arrest him and assaulted him, leaving him bruised and bloody. Adam is facing charges of resisting arrest and assaulting police, and RCMP say the officers needed to use force to restrain him. This morning, the Prime Minister commented on the incident. We have uh, obviously all seen and uh, been uh, deeply alarmed by uh, the pictures that uh, Chief Adams shared. Uh, obviously, uh, Minister Miller has uh, engaged with the Chief directly uh, multiple times over the past days. Uh, we need to do more. We need to take significant measures to move forward. This weekend, Alberta's serious incident response team said it would launch an investigation into the actions of Wood Buffalo RCMP. Chief Alan Adam joins me now from Fort McMurray, Alberta, and his lawyer, Brian Barish, joins us from Edmonton. Hello to both of you. Thank you very much for making time for us this evening. Good afternoon. Hi, Good afternoon. Chief. Hi, Chief Adam. I, I wanted to start with you and, and, and particularly get you to respond to what the RCMP said. They said they reviewed the tape of your arrest and found the officer's actions were, quote, reasonable. What is your response to that characterization? I, I, I don't know how to respond to that because uh, I can't think of any way where uh, the accusations that they made towards me were founded and therefore it has a hard time for me to respond to something that's not true. Let me follow up by asking you, and I know that we'll get into Minister Miller and what the federal government said, but why did you feel like it was important to bring this into the public now, especially during this time where we're, you know, we're talking so much about incidents of police brutality and race? Well, you know, when I look at the fact that on the evening of March 9th, when uh, my wife and I went to the casino, uh, you know, we arrived, we probably left around 10 after 11 that evening. And, you know, we left around 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, you know, we jumped in a vehicle, my wife was driving, and the RCMP came up to the window and said that he was investigating uh, uh, expired registration. You know, and uh, the the conversation between my wife and the officer uh, got heated exchanges where he reached inside the vehicle and uh, placed his uh, uh, hand against uh, my wife's arm and, you know, it kept on going. And then I proceed to the fact about why this happened. Mr. Barash, let me get you to respond, if you don't mind, to the way in which the RCMP is characterizing uh, the the arrest after they reviewed the tape, they, or the officer's actions, rather, as reasonable. What would you say to that? That is a total mischaracterization. This was a simple $310 ticket. The incident should have been dealt with professionally. It would have taken 10 minutes. They allowed the police, the police allowed it to escalate. In fact, we say they escalated matters to the point where my client was tackled by an officer absolutely unnecessary. And this is why we think this is an example of excessive use of power that has to stop. They, they said that, he, that, that Chief Adam resisted arrest. What would you say to that, Mr. Barish? That's absolutely incorrect. I've seen the police video, which we've been asking to have released. It shows that he did not assault anyone. He did not resist anyone. It is classic for the police to make these allegations as the best defense when they fear that the police brutality will be alleged. Fortunately, the video speaks for itself, but the police refused to release it to the media. Chief Adam, let me ask you about that video and more largely the subject of uh, police wearing body cameras, being able to collect this kind of video and make it accessible. The Prime Minister weighed in on that today. He says RCMP should be wearing uh, body cameras. W what do you think about that? I think it should be done because that would indicate clearly that, uh, you know, people's uh, rights are being abused by the RCMP. And as long as there's no video camera out there uh, recording them, uh, they will continue to do what they're doing. And, you know, it's just a matter of uh, time. You know, people are going to continue recording what they see 
uh, when police incidents are occurring with uh, civilians uh, throughout the country and all over the place, it's just going to escalate more with more video cameras coming out and stuff like that. So with that in mind, it's only in the best interest for uh, police and throughout this country to adapt to uh, the body cams because if they're saying that, you know, uh, people are video camera only what they want you to see, well, then the, vid the body camera will be able to let you see everything that is uh, occurring on. And, and Chief Adam, let me follow up by asking, the Prime Minister, as you heard in that clip that we played, said that you'd had uh, some conversations with Minister Mark Miller, who is the Minister for Indigenous Services in this country. Can you tell us anything about those conversations? Well, the, 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 the conversation I had with Minister Mark Miller was the fact that, you know, he stated the fact that he was appalled of this whole situation. Um, they're going to look into the whole matter and everything and stuff like that. And in no way, in any circumstances, should an RCMP put his hands on you, let alone uh, give you a clothesline and uh, do excessive damage to one person's face. That happened to be me at this point in time. And, and what did it, uh, I guess, what did you take away from that conversation? I mean, that, what do you think, do you think that might impact uh, the outcome of things? What, what do you, uh, I guess, were there any promises made to that effect? What, what did, what do you take away from it? Well, you know, they, they're, they're going to do an investigation. They're good. They're, this is not going away. This is going to continue to be at the forefront Um you know, since then, uh, I've also got off the phone with Premier Jason Kenney today, who apologized to me of the fact that this had happened. You know, Mark, uh, Minister Mark Miller had apologized. Carolyn Bennett reached out and apologized. Thomas Mulcair reached out and apologized. You know, and uh, the support is there, but the fact remains, there's questions that are need to be answered, and that's why we are calling for the release of the dash cam videos that the police have about this incident. Mr. Barash, what is the argument being made against releasing that to you? Well, I haven't heard, uh, no one's made an argument. I have seen the video and I have a copy of it, but I'm bound by trust conditions not to release it. So there is no argument to be made whatsoever. Uh, the one argument that I've seen publicly is that it's before the courts. Well, a million cases are before the courts. This is not a jury trial. This could be released, and let's let the public decide. And is because, it? Sorry, go ahead. Pardon me. Because in our push to have body cams, this is not only something to protect suspects; it will protect the police from malicious allegations by members of the public. This is in everyone's interest. And, and let me just ask you about the the sort of fight to have it released. What is the process like? Is that is that question before the courts right now, or is that just a request that you've made of the RCMP and they're just simply saying no? The chief this afternoon made a request of the commander in Fort McMurray for the release of that video. Let the media see it. Let the public pass their judgment. And, and Chief Adam, what is the response to that request that you've received? Like, what what are you? What is your feeling about them saying no to that so far? Uh, at this point in time, like I said, you know, our lawyer requested that information to be released. Uh, the RCMP said they're not going to release that information. Um, so, further to that, I've sent out a letter to the RCMP stating and asking them to release that video to the public. So this way, uh, we could get clarity on the whole matter. What's been uh, discussed here? If Commissioner Lucky is watching right now, Chief Adam, or anyone from the RCMP who might be uh, in charge of making that decision, what is your message to them? Uh, you know, Commissioner, what, you know, what I say to you is that, you know, um, there are a lot of uh, legal issues uh, stemming from racism across this country. Uh, you know, the, the Indigenous Bar Association, uh, the president, uh, Drew LaFont, uh, has put in with their organization 15 recommendations to the Canadian Law Society in regards to how matters should be dealt with when it comes to Aboriginal law and how the criminal justice system has to be swayed and fixed back up and stuff like that. And hopefully that, you know, out of all those recommendations that are put forward, it's time that Canada picks them up instead of collecting dust on the shelf and, uh, you know, start working on it because uh, this is a long-standing issue that uh, is continuing to uh, plague us today, and uh, we are in the 21st century, and I think it should be a problem 
of the past, and we should all work together to make sure that we live in harmony through uh, the better years to come. Okay, I have to leave it there. I appreciate your time, both of you, very much this evening. Thanks to Athabasca Chippewan Chief Alan Adam and lawyer Brian Varish. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.